Hi, time for today's mini lecture where we're going to be working with um, a couple of the exercises in chapter four in the extra exercises book. And let's share the screen. And the first one that I'm going to do is this one with the focal length of a camera lens where you have one over the focal length becomes one over the um, distance from the object you're photographing to the lens. And D sub I is the distance from the lens to the image sensor. And I've copied and pasted some of the stuff here from the book into the description at the beginning of the program. And again, at the beginning of your program, you should have your name and the date and what the purpose of the program is. So as someone who hasn't read the book or hasn't read the assignment will be able to understand what the program's expected to do. So I gave all of this information about the formula. And here I'm going to ask for the distance to the object in meters and the distance to the image sensor in centimeters and calculate the focal length in millimeters. So let's think about how we're going to solve this problem by hand. So step one is ask for distance to object in meters. Convert that to millimeters. Because that's what our final result has to be. Step three is we're going to ask for the distance to the um, image sensor in centimeters. And then we're going to convert that to millimeters also. So now we've got everything in millimeters and we're happy. And okay. now we want to um, calculate the reciprocal. In fact, let's name some of these here, okay? Let's call this object distance millimeters. And then we'll call this one object, excuse me, um, this is going to be image distance millimeters. Why didn't I start with, out with the word distance? The answer is because I want the difference between them to be as clear as possible. If they both start off with this, for example, distance in millimeters to the object and distance in millimeters to the image sensor, these things look almost alike. And I have to go all the way to the end to see which one is different. Whereas here, I know immediately which one's the object and which one's the image. So I want the reciprocal of the object distance in millimeters plus the reciprocal of the object image distance in millimeters. That gives us one over F. We then have to take the reciprocal of that. And that gives us F. Now, because I'm doing the reciprocal so many times, I want to have a method that calculates the reciprocal. Even though it is only a division by one, I need to practice with methods because that's the whole purpose of this chapter. So let's do that. And let's write that one immediately. So here we're going to do this. We're going to say um, public static double. And we're going to call it reciprocal. And we're going to give it some double number X. Now, normally I say you have to have meaningful names. Problem is that the reciprocal of a number, it could be the reciprocal of anything. The X here is truly a generic variable. And that means I don't want to give it a specific name, which would tie it down to how I think it should be used. And this one is a one-liner. I can return 1.0 divided by X. Now, what happens if somebody gives me a zero in there? Well, then what's going to happen is I'm going to get some weird result, and I may as well show you what happens here. Let's go into J shell. Let's say I have an integer n, and I set it to 12, and I try to say n divided by zero. When I divide by zero with integers, um, 
I get an exception division by zero. Now let's do this. Double X is 0.0, .0 and I say, what's one divided by X? And it turns out it gives me a special value called infinity. And once I have infinity, I can't do much anything, anything much else with it, but the program doesn't blow out. So what are we going to do if somebody gives us a zero as one of these numbers? The answer is we're going to give them back an infinity and it's on them. Oh, that's sort of cruel, but oh well. Now, the next thing I want to do here is I want to say, let's do a public static double. And this is going to be calculate the focal length. Now it's going to need the distance to the object and the distance to the image. And the question is, do we want them to be in millimeters or do we want them to be in meters and centimeters? This is a design decision. And here's my design decision. The arguments to this method will be the distance um, from the lens to the object in meters and the distance from the um, lens to the image sensor in centimeters. In other words, I'm going to take the user's input and I'll show you in a moment why, why I'm doing this. Okay? I have a reason for doing this. So we're going to have a double. Our first one is going to be called, um, let's say, let's see, object distance meters. And the next one is going to be image distance in centimeters. Now, just to make things very clear of what's happening, I'm going to have a static I don't need to say static in here. Hello. I'm going to have a final double, which is going to be um, millimeters per meter, which is going to be 1,000. And I'll have a centimeters, a millimeters, excuse me, per centimeter, which is 10. And if I want to be absolutely explicit, I can put a point zero there. Now I'm going to do all these steps that I had here. What I'm going to say is I'm going to say double object distance in millimeters is going to be the object distance in meters times the millimeters per meter. My object, my image distance in millimeters is going to be the image distance in centimeters times the millimeters per centimeter. Now I'm going to say, um, I'm going to call it 1 over F, which may not be the best possible name, but that's going to be reciprocal of object distance in millimeters plus the reciprocal of the image distance in millimeters. Then finally, my focal length is going to be the reciprocal of 1 over f. Again, I could have done this a bit more simply by doing the divisions directly, but I want to show that one method here, called, that namely calc focal length, can call many other methods. And then since I have to return a value, I'm going to now return focal length. Now I do the rest of the code in main where I'm going to do the asking of questions. I'm going to say enter distance from lens to object in meters. And I'm going to have a double and I'm going to call it um, input dot next double. Enter distance from lens to image sensor in centimeters. And this will be the double um, 
Well, okay, I'm sorry, object distance meters. And this is going to be called image distance centimeters. Again, these names don't have to match. Yeah. And that's going to be input.next double. And then I'll say, okay, my focal length will be calc focal length. And the numbers I'm going to give it are the object distance in meters and the image distance in centimeters. Then I can print out my result. The focal length of your lens is percent dot three F millimeters. Now, you'll notice that here, when I did this, I said convert them that to millimeters and convert to millimeters also. And I did that while I was doing the after I did the asking. Here's why I don't want to do that. That splits the calculation of the focal length between this method and your input. Essentially, if I were to have done this, if I were to have said double object distance millimeters becomes object distance meters times 1,000 here, then I would have been doing essentially part of the conversion process. Excuse me, there's a plane flying overhead. Let me pause for a moment here. And this is a very common issue that comes up. When you write a method, methods should be self-contained. They should do all the work. They should not have the work of a calculation being split between the main method and the method that actually does the result you want. That means I really should change my steps here um, in order to make it reflect what's going on in my program. I'm going to ask for this. And then step three is going to be call a method to calculate the focal length by doing this. Okay. I'm going to have to redo all my numbers here. No, yeah, that's OK. Let's call this step A is going to be convert. Um, Winners. Step B is going to be convert distance to image sensor. And now step C is to calculate reciprocal for that. And so now these steps more accurately reflect what I'm doing in my code. Let's compile this and see how many mistypes I have. Well, that's nice. Oh, don't tell me. I, I call it lens calculations. OK, so let's call it lens calculations. Easier than <laughs> saving it with a new file name. OK, now I compile, compile successfully. So let's say I have something that's four meters away, and the distance to the image sensor is um, 1.5 centimeters. And that's going to be the focal length of my um, lens in millimeters. You'll notice that I did a whole bunch of stuff here to get the, the, the focal length. Yeah, I had to split into three lines. There's a way to do it as a, in one line. Let's save this as lens calculations two. And I'm doing this again so that you can download, when you download this, you can see how my programs have evolved. Um, one over F is assigned this whole business here, correct? 
So that means really, when I want one over F, I could do this. And since I'm returning focal length, which is this, I can copy and paste this whole business and do it as one line. I don't need two semicolons there, by the way. That was copy and paste gone wild. And now you may not like this. You may think, okay, that's a little bit too difficult. By the way, it's still going to give me the same answers here. Um, let's compile this and run it. I think I had four and um, did I say 1.5 or 2.5? I don't remember. I think it's a two and a half centimeters. Okay, no, it's one and a half. Yeah, let's try that again here. Four years and one and a half centimeters. Yeah, and I get the same answer. So as you become more familiar with Java and programming, you might decide, okay, I want to have these nested function calls. I have a reciprocal call inside of another reciprocal call. You don't want to go overboard with this. Don't make something way too complicated. And sometimes it is actually better if you split things up. But if you don't like doing it, there is no problem with doing your calculation stages. Now, there would be going overboard. Okay, let's do this. Let's save this under another name. And this is more of a philo philosophical thing that I'm talking about here. Well, this lens calculation is three. So I might have here double recip distance millimeter is equal to reciprocal of object distance millimeter. And then I have double recip image millimeter is the reciprocal of image distance in millimeters. Then I would have double sum becomes recip distance millimeter plus recip image millimeter. Actually, that's one over F, isn't it? Hmm. At this point, you've sort of lost the thread of what's really going on. It's too, it's split apart too badly or too much. In the original, it's a reasonable blend. I'm doing these additions here and they belong together. And then I'm taking that reciprocal afterwards. That seems like a reasonable thing to do. In the second one, I might be Complex, complexifying it too much. And in this one, I am definitely splitting the things into subparts way too much, and I'm losing readability as a result. So there, there's your philosophy lecture for the day. Uh, do we have time for one more? Yeah, let's take a look at these and see what we can do. I'll at least start one of these. I like this last one here. If I have a rectangular prism, what I would like to do if I've got the length, width, and height, and I want to return or be able to calculate the volume, the surface area, and the diagonal. So that means I have to know how to figure those out by hand. The volume is going to be the width times the length times the height. That's a fairly standard formula. What's the surface area going to be? Well, we're going to have the width times the height. That's this end piece, and I have two of them. I've got the length times the height, which is there's going to be two of those. And then there's going to be the uh, base, which is the width times the length. I'm going to have a top and bottom, and that means I'm going to have two of those. So let me start writing this stuff down here. 
Uh, let's open up my template file. And we're going to call this um, rectangularprism.java. Monday's the 14th, not the 13th. And the purpose of the program here, given the length, width, and height of a rectangular prism, box, um, calculate the volume, surface area, and diagonal in separate methods to get practice with methods. Because after all, that's the whole point of this. And let's write down what the formulas are. So volume, that's going to be the length times the width times the height. Now the surface area, I'm going to have to have the length times the width times two plus the length times the height times two plus the width times the height times two. But I can use a little bit of algebra to simplify that into two times length times width plus length times height plus width times height. In other words, I'm factoring out the two and I'm putting it at the beginning. Now, what about the diagonal? Oh, crikey, that's going to be a fun one. Okay, let's take a look at the picture. You know, when I was a kid, my parents would always say, do you do we have to draw you a diagram? And the answer is, yes, if you draw me a diagram, that really helps sometimes. Okay, if we were to look at this, here's the diagonal that goes from the lower front to the upper back of the box. You'll notice that we have a right triangle here. This is the hypotenuse. This is the height of the triangle. And the base of the triangle is going to be the diagonal of the base of the box. If I were to draw the base of the box on the base of the box, it's diagonal, I would have that plus this plus that. So what I need to do is. Now I calculate the diagonal of the box base. And let's go back and look at the width and length. And then I need to calculate the hypotenuse. And let's call this um, box di base diagonal. I need, to I need to name things, otherwise I get confused. And then we're going to have to calculate the hypotenuse of base diagonal and height. So what is our, um, oh, do I want to do this? Do I want to write it in here or do I want to write it in my formula editor? Let's write it here. So my base diagonal is going to be the square root of width squared plus length squared. That's my base diagonal. And my big diagonal, the one I'm looking for, let's call it the long diagonal. That's going to be the square root of base diagonal squared plus height squared. Let's leave that as it is because we understand what's happening. It matches our diagram. We have our base diagonal squared plus height squared is the square of that, okay? 
That looks great. Let's put dot Java there, which would not work. Let's write our methods first. Oh, no, no, I don't want to do that. You know what I'm going to do? Let's ask for the length, width, and height right away. And we're going to have a double length becomes uh, input dot next double. You'll notice that I'm putting these blank lines in here to make things a little bit more readable. Uh, I'm into the width. And now let's set to calculate the volume. So the double volume is going to be, and what did I say I was going to call this? Um, get volume. Okay. That's a nice name. And I'll give it the length, width, and height. Since I didn't say whether it was going to be um, centimeters or millimeters, they're just units. Now, the question is, why am I writing just this part of it instead of all of it? Because I want to be able to build this in parts and test it rather than having to do the whole thing all at once. So here I'm going to have a method that returns a double. It's called get volume, and it's going to have a double length double width and double height. And I'm going to return length times width times height. And let's see if that part works. So if I have, let's say um, 1.5 times four is six and six times two and a half is 15. And sure enough, I get 15 cubic units. Okay, I know that volume is working nicely. I don't want to use some weird number like you know, 15.783, 18.902, and 54.007. How in the world am I going to know if I got the right answer? Whereas if I use numbers that are not trivial, like 0, 1, and 2, and things that I can do in my head, I've got a good chance of being able to figure it out. Now let's do our surface area. Again, we're going to give it the length, the width, and the height. I'm going to call a variable area, and that's going to be two times length times width plus width times height plus length times height. And then I'll return that area. I've split that calculation across three lines just to make it easier for me to handle. I could put it all on one line, but I just decided this one, it feels better to do it this way. Because again, it gives me the relationship to what's happening. I've got the width times the height, the length times the height, and the um, width times the length. And we're going to assist on out.printf. Uh, surface area is square units. Oh, 
oh goodness gracious me. Uh, let's see if I can bring up K calc here. All right. Um, let me pause for a moment while I go and get a pencil and piece, piece of paper so I can write this down so I can keep track of what I'm doing. All right, these are the three numbers I'm gonna use for my length, width, and height. So I'm gonna need 1.5 times four, which is gonna give me six. <clears throat> and then I'm going to have um, 2.5 times four, which gives me 10. And then I have 1.5 times 2.5, which gives me, and this one, I'm, I'm too lazy to figure it out in my head, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, let me go back to simple mode here. There we go. 1.5 times, clear everything. 1.5 times 2.5 is 3.75. So if I add those all together, I should get 19.75 times two, um, which I think is gonna give me 39.5. Let's check that out. 16 plus 3.75 is 19.75 times two, it's 39 and a half. Okay, great. Yeah, you know, I like to be able to do this and with numbers that I can at least handle. And let's compile this. Oh, well, that's lovely. I forgot to name it get surface area. Why? Because I didn't carefully read what it said here in the assignment. Bad teacher. So I have 1.5. 4 and 2.5 and my surface area is correct. Now I have my public static double get diagonal and again I have my length, my width, and my height. I'm going to set my base diagonal to be the square root of length times length plus width times width. Then I'm going to have my long diagonal is going to be the square root of base diagonal times base diagonal plus height, diag height times height. And then I'm going to return that long diagonal. Now let's go here and so we're going to call diagonal is going to be get diagonal for length, width, and height. Okay, this one is going to be interesting. I'm going to have to use my calculator a lot to figure out what's going on here. So this is my length, my width, and my height, correct? Okay, so my base diagonal is going to be um, 2.25 plus 16, which is, well, 1.5 squared is 2.25. Sixteen. that's 18.25, and I need the square root of 18.25. So let's see here. Does it have a square root button on it? No. Well, curse me. Okay, fine. If kcalc isn't going to help me, let's go back into J shell. I'm going to do math.square root of 18.25, which is about 4.272. Now, my 
long diagonal is going to be the height squared, 2.5 squared, 6.25, plus this squared, which happens to come right back to 18.25, interestingly enough. And that gives me 24.5. And I need to get the square root of that. And that's going to be um, math square root of 24 and a half. He's about 4.949, which is about what I expect to see as, as when, when I'm done doing, when I'm as my result, unless I screwed up my calculations by hand. I'm doing this on the fly. So the chances that I've screwed up my calculation by hand is rather large. So we have 1.5 by 4 by 2.5. 4.95 units. And what did I say that I was going to come up with? It was 4.949, which rounds up approximately to 4.95. So yeah, hooray, it's all working. Now, there's something to notice here. Remember when I said I have the 4.272 and I immediately squared it back up here to get this? Hmm, that makes you think, doesn't it? So the question is, I keep reducing this when I don't want to. Um, maybe I made this calculation a little bit more complicated than it needs to be. So take a look at, um, and in fact, I'll, I'll do this here. Let me just do a little formula here. By the way, I'm going into a lot of detail here. Don't worry if you don't want to look at this detail. The question that we're really asking is, is there a way to simplify these equations so I don't have to do as much work to get the long diagonal? And the answer is yes. So here, let me um, insert a formula. And let me make it large here. So my base is going to be the square root of length squared plus time plus width squared. And my diagonal that I want is going to be the square root of base squared plus height squared. So those are my two formulas. And you can take a look at those and see if you can figure out how to combine them into one formula that will be a little bit more reasonable. And that, I think, is going to do it for um, today's mini lecture. And that pretty much does it for chapter four. And what's coming up in chapter five? Chapter five is conditionals and logic. OK, hooray. Finally, we have this. Boy, are we going to be able to do great stuff once we have conditionals and logic. Not that we haven't been able to do some interesting stuff already, but this just is going to expand our possibilities and expand our horizons enormously. This will be good. See you all in mini lectures next week.